Love Line is meant for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love line. Love line. Love line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Love line, everybody. Yeah. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. All right. It's official. I've had an ass full of the rain. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm getting like. It's like, weird. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm never not wet. Yeah. I mean, here's 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 what I'm doing. Here here's here's how I spend my day. Either getting wet or drying off before I get wet again. But I'm never actually dry. I'm I'm actually, I I have I'm getting like moss. I have like yeah. peat moss on Between my your balls toes and your nails. No, my balls. Oh wow, that's scary. I got like a chia sack <laughs> going. It just I'm never dry. Well, you know what's weird with me? I went out in the rain today. I had to do some. I had some problems at the house. Leaks. You know, power outage. The whole thing. And I went out and I thought, uh, yeah, it's raining. It, it's just like. It's just a matter of fact. It's never, never gonna stop. Be it's never it, stop. It. It'd, be, it'd be weird if it weren't raining. And we're having biblical, troubles. Biblical rain. Like houses floating down hills and mudslides and uh, people falling in rivers. And uh, Didn't we get that figured out with the city creating uh, stringent I, codes for this kind of thing? Listen, uh, I'm going to say something that's not going to be popular. Now, the timing may not be right, but a lot of that stuff we sent to Sumatra and some of the other countries... We're going to need some of it back. The tsunami stuff. I'm just saying, just say, please dig deep and give back some well, of our stuff. The freaking, uh, we're days coming apart of, uh, here. Noah here in it's Los Angeles. It's biblical. Yeah, it's bad times. And I've uh, officially had an ass full of it. Yeah. My dog smells. My nuts smell. Everything smells, Drew. Everything's wet. Everything smells. Every And here's the other thing, too. Everything <laughs> is somewhere. Where's my rain jacket? Where's the umbrella? It's these things. See, you live in Los Angeles. You don't know what they are. I see. I don't even know what to do. I was holding the umbrella upside down the whole time. I was holding it by just a little metal poker Whoa. at the very end. And thing filled up. <laughs> Must have weighed 80 pounds, but I refused to flip it. No one said anything. I was uh, I was just carrying around, but water sloshing all over the place was actually worse. I don't know what to do with an umbrella. I don't seagulls have, landing on the <laughs> seagulls. There was uh, a flock of geese landed in there. I, I I don't know what to do. Squirrels were cleaning. But themselves. now you do. You've been living in this for three weeks now. Three weeks. I got a jacket with a hood now. It's and people crazy. understand. They think of rain the way it rains, like in New York or Pennsylvania. It's sort of like it rains here. It just on loads. It's, it's pelting. It's like stuff's dry. It's uh, driving it rain was, uh, I, hour I, on end. No, my, it was like my house was being sandblasted yeah, yeah. all last but night. Hour just on driving. End. I was up all night. I went to bed at 3. There were like sirens at 5.30. I was, I was worried. And all I do is worry about everything. Right. Must be nice to be a chick, huh? <laughs> I guess like being a newborn, right? Just go to bed. Let him deal with it. I'm worried about drains and things overflowing and uh, dripping and uh, swelling and dry rot and wet rot and dry rot. and uh, fungi. I'm, I'm going insane all night. I can't sleep. It's just being pelted. Mm. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's good times. And let me just say this, too. Took me. You know, we, we always uh, get angry because uh, they always feed us that line of crap when it comes to driving, which is, hey, you drive fast. You don't get there any faster. Hmm. You, you drive, you, you obey all posted speed limits and uh, stay within the law. You get to the airport just as fast when you haul ass. You go 20, same yeah. as 100. Yeah, let me say this. Let me say this. When it rains, why do you get everywhere 20 minutes later? Because you're going because slower. Because everyone is going slower. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, there's nothing to do with hydrodynamics or the, uh, or the moisture affecting the clock or the calendar. Instead of... Averaging 74, like I do every night here, I'm now averaging 61, and it takes me 11 minutes longer. You see, everybody? It goes slower, it takes longer. I was noticing that. So I was, uh, there's nothing better uh, than trying to make time, by the way, Drew, when it's pouring rain outside. Impossible. That's become stunt driving yeah, yeah. now. <laughs> you become the a hole of the world. <laughs> Fog everywhere. Yeah, weird. I do this move too when it's foggy. I put my head like I lean forward nine inches, so my head is up. It's like like I become like an old man. Like, yeah, yeah. Where, where, over your head's over like, the steering wheel. Yeah, it's over the, the steering wheel. But I'm thinking to myself, me getting nine inches closer to the windshield. Make you see everything much clearer. How does <laughs> all of a sudden I'm an eagle? How does that work? But there's something very satisfying. It's sort of like putting your ear closer to the radio yeah. when the speakers are in the back of the yes. car. Shh, hold on, mm -hmm. I gotta hear something. There's something, it's like you get to do something. 
Something you, satisfying yeah, about it. Yeah, you feel you're doing everything you can. Yeah, like, hey, everybody, look, I'm leaning forward. I, I'm at attention. I'm focusing. I'm working. What really is going to happen is if the airbag goes off, I'll be decapitated <laughs> because my chin will be under it. Hey, speaking of the tsunami thing, you want to talk about this K-Rock event? Yeah. With the our mother station here in Los Angeles, the K-R-O-Q, has got a mm -hmm. website, krock.com. Mm -hmm. And they have a huge promotion going on right now called the Big Ass Auction. Is that right, Ann? Mm -hmm. And in this auction, amazingly, you can hire Hoobastank to play at any event you want. You can get Pennywise in your backyard. Mm. And you can be a guest on Loveline. Yeah. You can be the you can broadcast. I think we ought to do more than one night myself. But right now, it's just one. That's not over too much. It's about five. <laughs> Take it's, batting practice with the Dodgers. Well, but for people around the country, I, I would think the the Hoobastank, the Pennywise, yeah. and Love Line would be the things they'd be interested. Yeah, in. but you you can uh, you can take uh, drum lessons from uh, Travis of uh, Blink One Eighty Two. Wow. Yeah. Well. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Like he shows up stoned two hours late. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Now, <laughs> now the the, the Love Bangs Line. your girlfriend and leaves. You got to get yourself out that's here. That's what right? I think is going to happen. The, there's travels not included in these things, but yeah. it's only five hundred dollars so far. To Walk get on line. part. On the OC. Yeah. Yeah. This is good stuff. All the beautiful babies. And this all benefits. Why, Anderson? What? What's Anderson? He just say? said thanks for something. I have no idea. No, what I just said that'd be an extra, probably. He'd be walking in the background on the OC. No, he's going to be a guest star and lead in the in one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going to do it. They're going to do a three part love mini scene. Series. A three, a three way with the, with the uh, yeah. stars, in fact. Anderson, by the way. Think about that impulse you have, by the way, right there. Now, it usually gets directed toward me and sometimes through, but think about the impulse to uh, undermine. The yeah, yeah, you won't be doing it. You'll just be one of the schlubs in the back. You but might get a granola bar out of the deal. In any event, dude, real. It, it, yeah, it, right, don't anyone don't pay any money for that one. You're it, just going to be in the background. This all benefits. They should be paying you. Tsunami they survivors. Really should. I agree with that. They want Loveline to get the most money. That's what it is a great event. Others. And right now, Loveline's at five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks. That's a pretty good deal. Cost me seven fifty to come in and do it tonight. Tonight, so that's you get a, a hydroplane. Oh, that's okay. a deal, everybody. Drew, what did you pay tonight? I, I had one of those those uh, hovercrafts I had to bring in you had to, to get in here. Yeah. No, I mean, it it's actually, about bucks. forget about gas money and transportation. We actually pay oh, yeah. every night. We uh, love it so much. Most DJs actually bring home a salary, not us, Drew. No, no, no. We pay to talk to the kiddies. And that's, and now, of course, if they paid me, I would have to shut up and take calls. Yeah, yeah. This is why I'm yeah. able to wax <laughs> on about left turn arrows and uh, my grandmother for uh, hours at a time. But, uh, yeah, 311 signed guitar. Concert tickets to uh, all the big... Oh, here's a cool one, which is uh, the Weenie Rose. Now, you don't have to be from Los Angeles to know what the Weenie Rose. This is the biggest concert of the summer. Your band can come out and uh, open up. Yes. Yes, and here's the thing, too, Drew. You think about something like your band opening up on the Weenie Rose. That's a big deal. Batting practice with the Dodgers. These are opportunities, not just thrills. Let me give you an example. You're, you? I get in there. I take some cuts. You know, well, tell them what your story. Is. Well, I got warning track power. No, this uh, is no, 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 no. No, all I'm saying is, is your band opens. Just quiet down. And there are producers second. in the audience. There are big wigs out yeah. there. They're coked up. <laughs> they're they're vulnerable. They got ears open. You go out there and rock the place. I mean, think about it as a movie. Yeah. All of a sudden, oh, people you start win. cheering. Oh, yeah, you start you'd... cheering for your band. They don't want you to leave. Someone You're... run back and give you a record deal. You rock the place hard. You got a record deal. You take some BP with the Dodgers. Next you know, you're just cranking them all over Dodger Stadium. You get signed a big league contract. It's immediately. In no, a movie. They, yeah, I mean, these are opportunities. This isn't just some novelty. Love line, you come in, Drew takes a shine into you, leaves his wife, marries you. You become the, uh, you become Mrs. Dr. Pinsky. It's huge, huge. Or maybe we hook you up with Engineer Chris, single man, takes you back to his mom's house, <laughs> shows you his bobblehead collection. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Spend a magical night with Engineer Chris. Anderson maybe comes over and throws up on you. It's awesome. <laughs> Possibilities are endless. And let me tell you, so much goes... You know where the show is? On this show, Drew, it's behind the scenes. Oh, wait, well, every, it's the, the, the walk every night to the bathroom. The walk, the long... Yeah, the long walk to the our long favorite walk bathrooms. Of shame to the bathroom. We have two bathrooms. We have one we prefer. Twice a night we go to the faraway one when we really need to well, just delve as, into as, some as, issues. Sort of a, it's a special me event. What if right. a girl wins? Can she go in to the She bathroom can come with us. We've had we've had female Kathy Griffin came with us. Yeah, you, she's you not take really the a girl. you uh, take the uh, you take the walk with us, Anderson. Please, you take the walk with us to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you come in, you hang out. So, uh, and it's all I'm sure it's all a write-off, by the way, too. 
Not that any must of be. our listeners have anything to write. No, the parents. To write anything off. The parents All right, the might. parents. All right, there you go. All right. Jerry? Yes. You're 20? Uh-huh. Hey, Jerry, hang on one second. So I'm just, it's K-Rock, K-R-O-Q.com, the big-ass auction. Just click on that, and you'll see all the things. Yeah, you, you don't have to be in Los Angeles to take advantage of this, right. by the way. Okay. Jerry, here we go. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. Okay. All, all right, Jerry. You see what happens when I stop talking? Yeah, let's, let's start over again. There you go. Who do and you want to talk to? Jerry. Let's start really? over. Just pretend we were just getting here for the first time. Jerry. 20. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm 20, and I'm married, and for about two years now, and, um... How long did you know your husband before you got married? About, we were dating for about three months. Three months? And then got married all of a sudden? Yeah. Eight, was, at 18? Yeah. How old is he? He's 22 now. What, what's the hurry? What were you running away from? Nothing, really. We just... Is that just what people do where you live? They get married at 18? I don't know. We just... Well, I'm asking you seriously. I don't know. Around where you live, do well, people get married? She doesn't know. What do you do? Everyone in your high school get married as soon as they leave high school? Well, actually, we met at Job Corps. Uh -oh. We were both <laughs> at Job Corps. You. Job Corps is prison with a rake. I know a it is. A shovel. It is a shovel, right? What happened? Well, I wasn't a bad kid. I just didn't like my school. A lot of family problems. You know, wanted to get away from the family, so I went to Job Corps. Well, you right. were you were running away from your family right. into this marriage, okay? And what did you do? At, I want to know more about Job Corps. What do you do there? Well, um, I liked it. Whenever I went there, you know, you get you don't have to be a bad kid. You get to go there, live there for free. It helps. It helps. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, this yeah. is required. The first thing they ask you in the application, are you a bad kid? No. Yeah. Yes or no? Let me let me hear something you'll never hear at uh, Job Corps. Roll call. Silverstein. <laughs> Berkowitz. Wittenberg. Stein. <laughs> that is something you'll never. How fast would Jewish parents kill themselves if their kids went to Job Corps, Drew? Will you ever hear it? Cold far. <laughs> Will you ever hear that? What do you hear? Hey, got some Jones, some Washington, a little Hernandez. And then, then you got your good old Anglos. Got your few Smiths, Johnsons. You're just not going to hear Goldfarb. That's all. <laughs> so, what's your, Jerry, yeah, so what's your question, Jerry? Um, well, I don't have a sex drive anymore. And oh, hold on. No, it's you're not else. You're not going to hear. <laughs> Yamasaki! <laughs> Chi Chiu! Here's what you're not going to hear. Park. Park! No, Koreans. <laughs> I'd like to put together a list of names, last names you're not going to hear at the Job Corps roll, roll call. I think Park's up there, Goldfarb's uh, pretty high, Steinman's up there. Um, Japanese and, name's good, yeah. Yeah. And the Lee, a few the Chinese ain't going either. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to have any Lees, and uh, you're not going to have, like, uh, Takanawis. No. All right, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, what's your last name, just for fun? Well, it was Johnson. <laughs> I did have you on the list. I know. <laughs> yeah. What's your husband's name? Um, Chris. No, no. His last name that you've acquired. Harrison. Harrison. Uh, what it, that, oop, that was number six. I would have got to that. <laughs> All right. Now, listen. I know, uh, <laughs> I know it sounds rough, but I did say her name, didn't I? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> all right. I, I, I'm just saying. Everyone's like, oh, stop. You shouldn't. Well, well. You got it. All right. You it. I got her name, didn't I? Yeah. Only gave two or three Anglo names, yes? You pegged it. All right, Jerry. You could have piped up, by the way. You had to make me ask you. You couldn't yeah. actually. When you heard your last name being called off now, on the now, roll. I will defend her. Like I can imagine it would be hard to stop the momentum and she's nervous and go, hey, you know what? That's funny. Adam, all right. When we come back, though, mind. you could have brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, like pulling baby. teeth with me, you know, That's my mom all always right. said. <clears throat> all right, so you went to, you know, what do you do at Job Corps, by the way? You finish school. I finished two years of school in two months. Um, I got wow. a trade. What was your trade? CNA. Certified uh, ass wiper. CNA, certified ass wiper. What's that, that, some kind of nurse, nurse or assistant. something? Certified kind of. Assistant. I'm a lot lower than a nurse. I do all the cleaning of the butts and the puke and the Oof. caffeine people and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, uh, and, um, and. You guess what? Nursing does a fair share of that, too. Yeah, and then so, but you have it, you, you, can, you can get a job, right? Yeah, I got a good job now because of it. What do you get an hour? Uh, I get paid nine fifty. 
couple and of my a, friends get paid like ten, twelve, thirteen dollars an hour. Yeah, but she's calling from Missouri, where yeah. they pay you to take an apartment. Right, right. Jessica's one hundred and twenty-eight bucks a month for yeah. uh, one bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. it's nice. Seriously, how much is a how much is like a one or two two bedroom where you live? Well, average is like three eighty, four hundred. Yeah. Yeah. See, well, seriously, over here it's seven, eight hundred bucks. Oh, I can't imagine that because I've lived in Missouri my whole life, so I can't imagine that at all. It's probably oh, more than that. Listen, I have I fr I have friends who live in like West L.A. They have a nice mm -hmm. little townhouse, two stories, you know, you know, about twelve hundred square feet or something, three grand. Mm -hmm. I have a friend paying five hundred for a three bedroom townhouse here. Five hundred. Yeah, that's well. So the ten bucks ain't so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> it works. Yeah. Really works. We'll move out to Missouri. Hey, Drew, let's move the show to Missouri. Let's go. We'll be walking cool. around lighting cigars off hundreds and stuff like that. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Cold Cadillac. You look like, like Bishop Don Juan. number on the hood. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. Well, look, so, I'm interested so you, in this. Your question, Jerry, is? That I don't... You, look, you don't have, have a sex drive? Yeah. You haven't had a child, no baby or anything like that? No. It's just uh, me when, and him. When did the sex drive drop off? Uh, about a year into it. You didn't start a birth control pill or medication or anything like that at that time? I've been off and on meds and birth controls and stuff like what, that. What meds? What meds? Prozac. All right, well, Prozac will shut, shut you down completely. Um, so you, you have no sex drive when you're on Prozac, typically. Well, see, whenever, before we were together and everything, and I was on Prozac and birth control together, I was crazy about sex. Yeah. And, and like, whorish about sex, you know? Mm. And What's now that? I'm back on it and everything. Well, I wasn't on it during this time when it started. And it's just, you, you know, you I wasn't. You weren't on the Prozac when you sort of shut down, and then you went on the Prozac and you've stayed shut down. Is that yeah. accurate? All right. And how's the relationship going? It's great. We love each other so much. All right. She's fine. So what she do? Go get her you, pill adjusted? I wonder if she's bipolar. Hmm. <coughs> is, is it, can you ask her if that's ever been? I could ask her. Jerry? Yeah. Are you bipolar? They said I wasn't there yet. But you're getting there? I am. I have major depression, dis depression disorder. Oh, okay. And, um, you guys, yeah, do you, you guys have any kids? No. Good. Yeah. <laughs> have you talked to your doctor about this swing in your sex drive? Yeah, but the other health problems just kind of push it over. Like, what, what other health problems? Um, I've got, they're doing the birth control for the cyst on my ovary. Yeah, that's, that's nothing. That's what they think it is. That's nothing. Sure. Yeah. Everybody, just, just being a human, a female human, they get yeah, everyone gets Yeah, like those. everybody has that now. Right, there There's you go. And what's, what, are, what are your other well, health that, problems? That was their first one, so yeah. their next one's got to um, be next to nothing. The too. depression yeah. and stuff like that. Well, you just said that there nah, are other right. health problems. Uh, all right, look. Here's the thing. Talk to your doctor. Get your uh, meds You may be down. bipolar. That may be why you're swinging so much. It is a bipolar quality what you're describing. And no kids for and, a little and, while. And, be, and you talk to the doctor about maybe on antidepressants that don't shut your sex drive down so much. They don't work against you. Yeah. I like yeah. this job, Cor. Let's face it. You're yeah. a crappy student. You, things ain't working for you. Then we put you in a camp. We teach you a trade, and we get you a job. That's right. What's wrong with that? Nothing. You're the one disparaging it. No, but uh, what's... Well, let's face Let's... You know, they're criminals, but let's... I mean, why won't we admit in this country that 80% uh, of the populace isn't going to college and just act like it? And I mean, I mean, I know we want to encourage even more, people got, to go to college, I, but that leaves every, you know, here's the deal. Uh, one out of every 19 guys I went to high school with went to some meaningful college. The rest of us had nothing to no, do, you're, and you're we're right. pretending like we're all going to the right. going to college. There, there's that, and then what I hate even more, I'm more disturbed by, in fact, is that, okay, it's 2020 or 60 minutes, we're going to talk to what's going on with young people today. So we went to Middlebury and University of Pennsylvania, and uh, this yeah. is what 20-year-olds are thinking about. It's like, yeah. I, 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 yeah, we got, yeah, those are 20-year-olds who are on the fast track to success with rich, the, caring parents that are going to take care of Completely outside the curve. Yeah. Completely. Uh, completely. Yeah, I agree well, with so, you. Yeah, that, that represents a fraction, a fraction of, of the 20-year-olds that are out there. And then, by the way, who aren't the source of any of the problems that we're currently or, having. Or any of the trends, It's either. not gang violence uh, that we're worried about. It's not uh, rape. It's not incest. It's not arson. Well, then let's, let's think about this out loud for a second. Arson. <laughs> how would you... <laughs> <laughs> really worry about that? Yeah, flooding, flooding, flooding. flooding. Uh, how would we? How would you create a system that really addressed that? I would go by weight. I would go by weight. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, now here, here's what I would do. I would uh, you make apprenticeship I, again. I Bring would, back Pinocchio. And I would do. I would do. I would do an evaluation somewhere around the eighth or ninth grade, 
uh, talk to the teachers and say, look, does this kid, this yeah. kid got it or is this kid junior college material? Yeah. And they'd say, uh, well, here's my opinion. And then I would talk to the kid and I would say, look, right now you're heading toward welding school. Now, if you want to go to college, it's time to pick it up. You got a semester, or you got two semesters. Mm -hmm. You got until you know they, the end they, of the they, tenth they grade. They did that with you, and they said, "Oh, well, you're ceramics." Nah, here you go. I don't. They never really. Yeah, I was a ceramics major. Yeah, but that's the same kind of thing, though. Well, no, they no, they said everyone has to pick a major, and oh. ceramics was the only class I wasn't failing. Oh, okay. football and ceramics. I think they let football be a major, so I took ceramics. But the, here's the point. I started taking like two or three ceramics classes a semester, right, so what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And and I stand by that, and I parlayed that into quite a nice living. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Making use that ashtrays. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I see you at the art festivals all the time. Oh, Throwing the feldspar. And... Yeah, weathered feldspar. I mean, pinch pot, <laughs> slab pot, coil pot, you name it. Pot pot. I told you I found a coil pot out <laughs> yeah. in the woods one time. All right, let's not digress. Okay. The point is, is all right, here's what I do. So I do a little uh, early assessment about the ninth grade. All right, let's face it. You know who's going and who isn't. There's a, there's a couple. There's maybe 10% that are sort of on the fence. Could go this way, could go that way if they started applying themselves. Right. Then we give a little speech to them. Look, you want to go to college? And by the way, if you don't want to go to college, great. Because here's the thing. You could go to college for four years, spend a lot of money, rack up a lot of student loans, and on maybe uh, pick up a venereal disease. And at the end of it, you could end up with an art history major that basically had you back at square one once you graduate. You could go to substitute school teaching for 12 bucks an hour or you could get into welding i get you a job in the defense industry and you make 28 50 an hour and then golden time and you get in a big yeah. strong union and all that kind of stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah. by the time you're 20 you're making 18 25 bucks an hour wow so i i would have liked to do that oh yeah and by the way some of these people have families that don't have money the dad's not around you know they, they got to bring something back to the nest sure so anyway about about then i would ask them and then by the 10th grade it was time to start uh, separating the wheat from the chaff drew see what i'm saying it's quite an image you could play sports you could uh, go to the prom there'd be a separate welding retard roofing retard prom for you no you go to all things you do everything but when you go in you didn't waste your time just sitting there in uh, some student government class or something you'd actually be learning electronics or plumbing or whatever yes 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 or stripping oh oh yes that'll be a weed out the hotties <laughs> We don't need you pushing pencils, sweetie pea. Uh, Give me that peachy folder. You don't want them to weld? Here, put these pasties on. Yeah, I guess the weld is what you do. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's take a break, Drew. We took a call and a half. That yeah. seems like enough. People, 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 you want to uh, give some money to a, a good cause, you go to uh, krock.com and uh, go to the Big Ass Auction. And it doesn't matter if you're in L.A., you can be uh, across the country and get a chance to uh, come in here and co-host Loveline. Mm hmm uh, you can uh, go to Vegas with the fabulous Striker. You can get uh, tickets to all the K Rock concerts. You can get 311 signed guitar. I mean, it goes on. But the Pennywise in your house you or the Puba Stank at the event you, of your choice. You get to sprint through an episode of the OC. <laughs> uh, batting practice with the Dodgers, yeah, whatever you opportunities, want. Opportunities, not just. No, again, again. Yeah. No, not just novelty experiences. You're going to be, uh, you'll be playing on stage. You'll be, you might even, you might work. You, I say if you have a good batting practice with the Dodgers, you could very well work your way oh. into the lineup. In the 20 minutes we've been discussing this, the love line went from 502 to 1550. 1550. Yeesh. $15.50. <laughs> that is good cash. But I'd like to see it get up around $17 before the night is over. Yes, Drew? No, fifteen hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. No, no, no one's ever gonna cough that up for this show, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. All right, listen, Drew. Yeah. You know what you should do? Here's what put you put should a big do. Bet down. Here's what you should do. I gave three grand. You son of a bitch. Yeah. You should kick something in. Now I won't embarrass you on the air because I know you're gonna be more in that eighty to eighty-five dollar range. <laughs> but if you're calling in people, you should you should kick them back. You know what you should do? You should rebate them. I should rebate. I, I should match them. Oh, you should match them, but that ain't ever going to happen. Well, look, let's face it. It's not getting over two grand. You get, you need a write-off. These people need it. All right, you think about it, Trump. All right. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Get it on. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> yeah! Hmm. 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 Hmm.
I love macadamia nuts so much that it, when I found out that uh, my partners, Jimmy and Daniel, didn't like them, I got angry. Of course. It's like, oh, so good. Now, what's the matter with them? Yeah. What is the matter with them? It's really it's like going, hey, uh, who could go for a BJ? Not me. Like, huh? Uh, that sounds like them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. They're passionate men. Very passionate men. They don't all like right. cars. They don't like automobiles. Well, all right. Maybe like okay. You ready to keep rocking? Here we go. Oh. All right. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. Where are we? Mm -hmm. Speak to uh, Adin Adina? Yeah. You're uh, 24? Yeah. What's up? Mm -hmm. Um, I was calling you guys because um, I think I might have a Vicodin addiction problem. But if I do, I want to know what it could be doing to me internally. Well, I'm, I wish I could scare you off it, but the reality is that opiates were originally developed as such good medications or considered such good medications because they don't hurt anything. They're, they were capable of removing pain without harming the body. Mm. Now, some people get concerned about the Tylenol or the acetaminophen in the Vicodin, but the fact is the way people escalate their Vicodin use when they're addicted I've never seen, I've treated thousands of Vicodin addicts. I've only seen one case of liver inflammation, liver toxicity from the Tylenol in the Vicodin. Really? Yeah. It's just that you slowly, your liver yeah. can adjust and create the machinery to break it down and not make it toxic. Well, is the same mechanism in your body that uh, makes it possible for you to, once you got off on one and a half of them, now you need 55 of them to get off? Isn't that almost the same event going it, on in your body? Yeah, it just the uh, it, it, that's actually a brain event, and this is a no, liver. No, but uh, but I understand. But the body adjusts. But your, your, your body, body adjusts. Yes. Your body. I mean, your liver adjusts, and yes. your brain adjusts, and your, everything sort of adjusts. It tries to the body tries to maintain homeostasis. Right. If you're hungry, you eat. If you're thirsty, you, eat. you know that that's your body's basic. Mechanism. Right. And you, so you dump a bunch of crap in it, and it tries to it tries to. Even it, even it out. out. Keep it keep it under control. Right. But but at the end of the problem with Vicodin and all the opiates are not the way they harm the body, just it's the severe addiction that they cause. And does your brain do the same thing? I mean oh, yeah. does your brain it's like that's where that really happens. I have 10 of these. I have to even my th my thought out. I, I have 10 of these. i got to make it so I can work with this. I've gotta, right. That's why you have withdrawal. Because right. you, when you, you, all those compensations are still there when you take but the drug But I have 10, and I'm not getting effed up anymore because my body's evened out. Right. I need 20 now. That, but the, the, the addictive process is the usurpation of the survival systems. The, Once, drive, the, well, the survival systems don't work right Hold anymore. on. <laughs> when you get to 100, though, it goes back to 1. Am I right? So no. if you can make it past 100, you'll be back to many, 1 again. Many have tried. Oh, the other thing with Vicodin, I'll tell you there is one bad thing with Vicodin I think about them that is important for you to know is it can cause deafness. Even in relatively small doses, deafness? it can cause deafness. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> what no, was that? I, I mean, yeah, I've uh, never heard of that before. Yes, it can. It, it's, it's a rare, well, not an, it's an uncommon, maybe rare event, but I've seen, I had a guy taking 100 Vicodin in a day and developed stone deafness, just completely deaf. Like, my biggest concern is, I mean, I have at least two every day. I mean, it's been for months now. But my blood pressure, I notice, is starting to get up into like the 160 some days. Well, that, that's the de that's the withdrawal symptoms. That you, you got to get treated. That's it. The, Two it, a day. That's still. Well, that's, she's in the lightweight. Scale. Lightweight. <laughs> so hopefully. What do they won't, do to treat you though? You have to go you, into a program. Just, you have to be detoxed. Stop you have, doing it and you go send you to, home. You have to be in a structured environment. You've got to get some. You got to get a twelve-step process going. It takes time. Opiate are, addiction is a very difficult. Are problem. you are you really only doing two a day? Yeah, I am. But I only weigh about I don't know 105 pounds, and for me. Yeah. No, I see. All right. Give some some help. You know what? Indiana, you go to a treatment program. For opiate addiction, in my opinion, cannot be treated outside of a hospital. Let me say this. You know, and they, it's always progressive. They say that chicks get paid like seventy-five cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Go by weight. Well, let's think about a chick's life first off. How much more food do you eat than your wife? You know what I mean? <laughs> Twice as much. Easily. Not one quarter as much. Yeah. You know, you eat twenty-five percent more. You eat, eat twice as much. Hundred percent more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, for me, like if I got to get jacked up, I got to drink a six pack or sure. a bottle of wine. I gotta, Five times as much. I got to drink a lot more. Yeah. My 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 wife has wife a shot of Nyquil. She's yeah. wiped out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My mom. My mom. A little, little a half a glass of champagne. She's just swinging off the chandelier. Mm. You know, I mean, it's a cheaper lifestyle. But how They're much more do shoes cost? 
shoes. Their oh, shoes yeah. are more. Yeah. Their shoes are more. Give them that. But think about the lifestyle. But the shoes, yeah. They're like mm -hmm. those little, you know. They, uh, I, I, a woman could be, you know what I love, too? Oh, must be nice. A woman could be like, the, you know, Britney Spears, you know, make, make $20 million a year, but wants a Volkswagen Bug. Once a nineteen thousand dollar car. So See what I mean? It's a guy that wouldn't work. <laughs> right. You need to drive something that was so well. You you make uh, ten million dollars a year. You got to drive a million dollar car. <laughs> you, see, you see what I mean? They could be happy driving. Yeah, but they have to have twenty million a year. They have to have a million dollar diamond. Well, yeah, but if you're if you're a brother, you oh, know what yes. I mean? Well, they got the diamonds and the car. Yeah. You see. Okay. Here's my point. Much more to be a black guy in this society. Okay, with the rims yeah, and the jewelry. So they need to have the cars more, be compensated. They need to level. make the most. And there's That's a his, right. history to compensate for I'm just for them. saying, when you weigh out the whole 75 cents on the dollar, and most of the guys are living with, you know, paying the utility bills and the mortgage half the time, I think they're coming out on top. We I mean, just think about food consumption. Oh, and how about your porn uh, budget? Oh. Huh. It's, yeah, it's just boggling. Into, into the millions. Oh, yeah. All right. You ready to go, Drew? Yeah. Ooh, we got a little Germany or Florida coming up. This is exciting. Justin? How's it going, guys? 24. What's up, buddy? Love the show. Thanks. Uh, Drew, I just want to say you're a man of extreme passion, and Adam, you are a true genius. And our Rams are going to get it done this Saturday. Yeah. You know this, baby. You know this. <laughs> no, I don't know it, but uh, I'd like to see the Rams win. And let me just say this to all the uh, a-hole uh, S-kickers out here from uh, Parts Unknown <laughs> with your beloved teams that you abandoned. Everyone, everyone says You've to been me, a Ram like, fan since they were here. You continue to be a Ram fan even when they moved. We don't have another team. Right. What am I supposed to do? Right. That That's my old thing. It's like I grew up in Los Angeles. I was a Rams fan for, you know, 30 years, and then they moved. Moved. And now it's like, everyone's like, I can't believe you're still a fan. of. Wait, first off, this, this, by the way, coming from uh, Jimmy's cousin Sal's a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. has never even been there. <laughs> His dad got him a stupid football helmet lamp when he was nine, and that's it. The temerity to point the finger at me. Everyone else is just some uh, Jay Off who's uh, from New York or from Boston. They haven't been there in 10 years, yep. and they're never going back. Yep. Please, right. how dare you people point your greasy I'm fingers at me. I'm a Rams fan, too, for the same reason. Well, so if you, if you did get a team, would you give up on the Rams? If you got a team, well, I'd be hard. We grew I, up with. Them. I think you always liked the team you grew up yeah. with, just like a lot of people that were Brooklyn Dodger fans. Yeah. You know, still followed the Dodgers after they moved to L.A. Right, right. But it would certainly help if we had a team out here. We have no team, and the team we have left. And uh, here's my question to everybody: Who am I supposed to root for then, if not for the team I grew up rooting for? Right. Thank you. Sure. Very okay. compelling tonight, Drew. Go ahead, Here Justin. All right. I'm a little, hang on a second, Justin. A um, little unsettled. Uh, producer Ann has been sitting in the studio with us for 45 minutes. I've never seen this before. Well, she's working hard on this uh, tsunami relief stuff, ah. and she's depressed about her chargers. Speaking oh. of teams. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I noticed promising. that about her. Yeah. So promising. You didn't go down there this weekend, did you? No. no. Justin? Yep. What's up? All right, here we go. A local man has sleep interrupted constantly by loud noises from a nearby sadomasochism parlor decided to inflict his own punishment on a patron of the club by shooting him with a pistol in a bid for peace and quiet. Police said the man, aged 22, entered the neighboring club to complain about the loud noise and then attacked a 37-year-old client with the gas-powered pistol after finding the dominatrices absent. The, victor, the victim suffered a cut lip and impaired hearing. Hmm. Gas-powered pistol. Must have been uh, one of the CO2 pistols. Is it, is it a pellet? Or? I said 22, though, didn't you? You're talking about a pellet, pellet gun? Pellet gun, pellet gun. But that's no, a 22 it says, pistol. It says a get, no, he's age 22. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. 22 pistol. And he says, it just says gas-powered pistol. All right. That, that's, a, that's a pellet gun. Uh, well, he shot him in the face with it, apparently. The victim okay. suffered a cut lip and impaired hearing. Okay, hold on, Justin. Germany or Florida? Wow. Pellet gun feels That's it? That's German. He's, for... he's not giving us anything else? I no, mean, it's like he had something to say. Want? Were there any more hints? Uh, nope, that's about it. That's the story, all right. Drew, that, you know that little voice inside your head? Ignore it. Stop trusting. The, the, Please the, uh, stop trusting your instincts. The, uh, Start trusting my voice inside my head. Okay. There it goes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The way it was written sounded peculiar. You notice that? Mm, was that a peculiar sort of. way of writing? I'd say the S and M Club felt German. The pellet guns felt Florida to me. Yeah, that's tough. That's weird because I, I get the feeling like pellet guns in Germany are uh, really. Yeah, uh, there's there's it's more like of them. 
No, I, 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 the pellet gun, I think they probably have, like, competitions and stuff, you like, know? Like shooting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the, 22. the S&M, 22, hmm. shooting them in the face. That Tough. sounds Floridian. Tough. Tough. All right. The behavior All right. is so Floridian. All right. Want to split it? I'll go Florida, you go Germany? I, I've been getting killed, Drew. I can't take One of us can be wrong. I'll go Germany. All right. Go Florida. All right. Justin? You guys are split on this, huh? Germany or Florida? You know the ace man is right. It's Berlin. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! yeah. Uh, Hell yeah! 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 Hell yeah! You will grant me, though, that is Floridian behavior. Yeah. Yeah. I think the... the but the pellet gun felt more... The way it was presented, the right national. You want to go Florida's BB gun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pellet gun and, Wrist rocket. and also the fact that it's a gas-operated gun, but they didn't give it a name. Right, right. Suggests some yes. foreign Again, something. The way it was it's written. a little translation yeah, thing. Right, right. And the S&M Club. Germany. Feels German, yes? Yeah, it does. All right. And uh, so we got the, the K-Rock's big-ass auction. Where are we at with Loveline? Um, we were at $1,550 when we left off. That is a you coming in, sitting in co-hosting uh, one night. Everything from uh, warming up my coffee to cupping my Playing snacks. Germany or Florida. Playing Germany Playing or Florida. K uh, Aces Accordion Ranchero Countdown. Yeah. See the magic. <laughs> I may even wear sweatpants. Meeting Chief Thunderbear, perhaps? Uh, mm, yeah, it's hard. It's tough. Yeah. You know, he doesn't believe in help it. I know. He I believes everything's from the spirits, and mm -hmm. if you get in and tamper with it, you're sort of tampering with the spirits. I, I, I It's tough with the translation, but uh, I get the feeling he's just really... He's yeah, just cheap. Is. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's krock.com, kroq.com. The, it's, I mean, what's the actual official title? The Tsunami Relief. K-Rock for Relief Big Ass Auction. If you cl click on that, you can uh, bid on becoming a guest up here. You can uh, get uh, Interpol tickets, is that right? Or you can open for bands for uh, the K-Rock Winnie Rose. Here it is. True. He's like a, he's like a professor with that stuff. That's what right. don't you know? Wait a minute. This is all. Yeah. Interpol, see Interpol in Paris. Get Pennywise uh, in see your Interpol home. Interpol in Paris. Yeah, concert, airline tickets, hotel. It's impossible to say Hoobist, about spitting on somebody. Hoobist Tank, wherever you, whatever event you like them to come to. No doubt. Hoobist Tank guitars. comes to your event. Yes, plays plays your event, your bar mitzvah, whatever. Wow. I know. Wow. And it's for a great cause. So. All right, let's uh, take a little break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah, everybody. Rock on. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. So uh, you go to uh, K-Rock, the uh, web address, krock.com, and you go to the uh, Big Ass Auction, and you bid on uh, one of these many, 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 too many for me to list, but really cool things, and then you go do them. Yeah. One of them is uh, coming to the studio. Cool. Hang out. So if somebody pays $2,000 to come in here and join us, you're going to talk to them? Please? Mm. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. Uh, we get Thunderbear in here. I'll get Chris. Okay. I'll get Chris to talk to him. Like, Chris, tell uh, what's his nose to get me some more coffee. Thanks. Uh, uh, it, it, please stay away from the macadamia nuts. Those were a gift from a listener. <laughs> yeah, that's what's or, going on. Or Anderson. Like. <laughs> yeah. Anderson. Uh, I got an itch under one of my mucklocks. Could you reach in there? And, yeah, yeah. Well, at least talk to him. Use a wire hanger. That's good. Yeah. 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 No, what do you mean? I'm gonna be. Uh, I'll show you the time you're, of your you're, life. Your loquacious self, gregarious, loquacious. Reach around is what you'll be getting. For uh, the, that's for the gents. Oh, uh, the ladies, no reach around, which is its own gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tara. Uh, hi, it's Tara. I knew there was a correction coming. I knew it. Yep. I knew it. Yep. Well, any of the Taras that are Taras or Taras that are Tara, you know what you get. You correct me on that. It's listen. I here's the deal. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Are they spelled differently? No. Okay. They have to be spelled differently. Well, people, <laughs> if, if people don't remember Tara, don't call me Tara, goddammit. We, uh, we uh, used to have a, a lovely, lovely, lovely phone screener who uh, was called Tara, don't call me Tara, goddammit. Because uh, that was how she basically introduced herself. She would go uh, nuts on you uh, if you ever called her uh, Tara. Like, uh, first off... Nobody else gives a rat's hiney about uh, the way you pronounce your ridiculous name, number one. Number two, 
if the name is spelled the same way, then we just have to decide on a pronunciation. Otherwise, it's gonna you're gonna go through an entire life of just correcting people. Tara. And number three, don't correct anybody. I'm gonna talk to you for 15 seconds and then you're gone. Tara really should be like these. And smash. you know what? Not gonna use your name again. That's an interesting point. Right. That's the only time it's coming up, really. Right. It's not like, listen, Tara, uh, listen, Tara, you got to search your soul. Tara, Tara, have you been to Tara? <laughs> you've got to go to Tara. You've been, you've been everywhere, but you've never been to Tara. Tara, sweetie, Tara, listen to me. Tara, shh, 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 precious Tara, shh, Tara, Tara, Tara. No, don't talk, don't talk. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I say your name once at the top. Tara really should write in, in this show. Tara really should be T-E-R-R-A, like like Terra Firma. Yeah, because and, uh, because to Tara, why not? It's, it's a little, this little sort of yeah exoticness to it. Salt of the earth, Terra. Yeah, because a terrace. How do you spell the terraces? That's how you spell T E R R. Yeah, yeah, terrorism. Hmm? Yeah, Terra. Yeah, what? Now here's the thing. T A R A. That's how, now maybe how we should give her a break. Maybe we should, may, maybe her name is spelled T E R A, and the screener screwed it up. Uh -oh. Let's give her one chance. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Tara? No, Tara. <laughs> Tara works. I get it all the time. Uh, how do you spell your name? It is T A R A. Uh, and okay. That's Tara. But your I name is spell Tara. it to your screener. Yeah, right. they spelled it right. But here's the deal: if your name looks like Tara, you're going to get called Tara every single time. Certainly when they see your name written. I get to thank my parents for that. All right. Well, you know what you should do? What's Go what? to Tara. Or, or switch the spelling. Or sw switch the spelling. All right. What's up? Um, I just have a question. I got married um, about a year ago, mm -hmm. and I was a virgin when I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And we just have such sexual issues. Like, he has a very high libido, and I guess I don't really have much of one. Eesh. And most of the time it hurts. Oof. And I don't know if it's him or if it's me. Is there um, any kind of anatomic mismatch? I don't believe so. I mean, you guys I don't know. fit together. She, she's that's a big word for Minnesota, Drew. Come on, you fit. That, that's yeah. not the problem. And oh, what, yeah. what point is six four? I'm five eleven. It's perfect. But okay, well, I'm not talking about your height. But... A lot of honky. <laughs> okay. And uh, how how big's his uh, pecker? <laughs> well, I've asked him that, <laughs> and yeah. he's asked average. Him. Average. Says average. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's five and a half inches. Nothing to compare it to. Okay. And Tara, uh, what, at what point is their pain? Is it right at the initiation or after you've been in there for a while? What, what's the story? Oh, usually right at the beginning and then, and then it's okay for a while. And then if we get a little rough, I guess it really starts to hurt again. Well, like, I don't mean, know if he's hitting my cervix or... Well, but the, the deep penetration will hurt some people, particularly if you have a history of ovarian cysts or endometriosis. Mm -hmm. But even so, you go for a while, you can dry. There are, there, there are normal reasons that things can start to hurt after five or even ten minutes. Why don't you get a little udder bomb and put it down there? Oh, they tried oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's one tried. of those Minnesotan They, they tried that. I, I, know, I know Minnesotans. They would have tried that already. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah. and do you, do you love the guy? Are you uptight? Were you ever abused? Nope, absolutely not. Wonderful parents, and I am totally in love with him. Beautiful. Then uh, then it's just about lubrication well, and are, relaxation. Are you on any medication? Nope, not at all. But I don't understand. My One of my bigger questions is a libido issue. I don't understand why I don't crave it. Is it because, I mean, I'm in well, law enforcement. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's stressful. Nope. You're, tw you're 22, yeah. number one. And let's face it, 22-year-old women... Uh, even though you you know you're packing a piece and you, you got your shield and you'll take down a perp if you have to, 22 is still young for a woman yes. sexually. You'll be different at 28 and you'll be different at 37. That is and, true. Uh, you'll be different at 45, which is horrible, but it's true. I mean, that's the way it is. 22, you've not come into your own. There, there is absolutely that. And are you? Do you say you're not on birth control or anything like that? No, I do have that copper IUD. I okay, had that put that's in. That's fine. Um, we'll mm -hmm. And then, by the way, that can be painful with deep penetration, too. That might be part of the problem. And you've never been sexually active. You may be anxious about it. And certainly he has got to understand. You see, men and women have great confusion about what causes desire in women. And for men, all they have to do is have a sexual thought or you see a, a, a part of a female body, and they become desirous immediately. Mm -hmm. For a woman... Yep. It, it it takes a lot more. It's much more about the re discussion and relationship and time and touching and diamonds and flowers and and things that that, that picnics <laughs> picnics that make them feel a certain way. And you have to figure out what that is and communicate that to him, so he yeah. understands how to sort of get you going there. But with him, he's confused why you don't when you think about sex, you don't want to have it immediately. Mm -hmm. And you also have to appreciate that's the way he is. All right, baby yep. doll. 
How's the law enforcement going? It's good. I actually, I really enjoy it. All right. I, um, good. I got into it fairly young, and I've been in it no, ever since. No kidding. Well, what do you do? You, you drive around in a car? You have a yep, partner? Yeah, I patrol. I have no partners. Kind of on my own. Do you play by your own rules? Yep. It's kind of yeah. nice. <laughs> That's me. It's what I do. I play by my own rules. You know what I'm saying? Can't get any trouble that way. Tough, streetwise. Well, listen, I don't need the mayor and the DA and my uh, CO and uh, all those people. You mean that African American me. guy that with the suspenders? Yeah. He, he yells at you. Every yeah. Day. He's yeah. big mustache. Yeah, yeah. He's heavy set. And every time I walk by, he opens his blinds. So right. I'm like, Corolla, get in here, boy. And I go in there and he just starts yelling, Don't you eyeball me? And he just starts screaming at me about the mayor and the DA and, and the, the city budgets, council. And, and how I much just it tell cost the last time you. We're out playing by your own rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he then he gives me special. Then he tells me this. Then he's like, "Now the Pope's coming into town, <laughs> and I don't want you anywhere near this one, Corolla." We'll see. And then he then he threatens to lift my shield. <laughs> I don't lift your shield for that. He starts screaming at him. That's my badge. Then he wants my piece, and I take my one. I took my forty four revolver. I drop it down the table and it, give me your other one. He knows I keep. He knows I keep a uh, Friday night special. The, fr <laughs> Saturday. Saturday night special. Excuse well, Friday, late Friday, or early Saturday <laughs> night special in a holster that's in a boot holster. I take that too. You know what I mean? It's in the uh, sock suspender. That's right. Sock. Yeah. Gar All right. That's enough. Drive. That's enough. You're right. I'm tired. Fri I'm sick. <laughs> Friday night special in the socks. What do they call those things? Gar garter belt? Sock garter belt? <laughs> All right, buddy. What do you do? Well, okay, who are you? Mickey Spillane? <laughs> Quiet down over there. We'll take ourselves a little break. Chris, you know Mickey Spillane is? No. Okay. No, we'll huh? be right. his profession was? Mickey no. who? Okay. All right. Huh? We'll be right back after this. Yeah. Woo! Love line, baby dolls. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. I'm ace. That's my par, Dr. Drew. All right, Drew. Now we're talking uh, all night about this uh, relief program for uh, the uh, tsunami, victims. tsunami victims. And uh, you go to uh, krock.com. That's the mother station out here. You don't have to be from Los Angeles. You just go to krock.com. And there's many, many interesting things to bid on because a lot of these bands have stepped up and other people have stepped up including uh, us here although it's really not anything for us you come in hang out make a bid and you get to uh, spend a day a night i should say over here doing love line yes you know what the current bid is what is the current bid three thousand three dollars three thousand and three dollars mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's uh that's a lot again we pay to come in and do the show ourselves mm -hmm. Engineer Chris gets ten dollars an hour, which is like really, in a way, like paying. In a way, yeah. Yeah, seriously. Well, are you up to eleven dollars yet, Chris? No. <laughs> so you're saying you're at ten? Yes. So you get twenty dollars. That's correct. All right, buddy. That's okay. Yeah. That's doing all right. That's doing horribly. That's a mess. Well, you're, you're paying to be here. Yeah, I like the job. All right, you it's like fun. the gig? You could do you like worse the abuse than this. you take from him every night. He's no, on a national fine. radio show. Yeah. Hey, speaking of national radio show, I needed some help from our audience. I'm doing a show for Discovery Health Channel, and uh, we need a couple who is willing to keep a video masturbation diary, not of them masturbating, but of what they've done, and to sort of be able to talk out how different maybe you and your partner. Are you saying they should use a video camera to masturbate, no, Drew, no, that no, they no. should actually to put a camera no, on? No, to discuss what they've done with their with time, with habits, how often, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they can compare. The other thing is we're doing a show on phobias, like people that are fearful of penises or having oral sex or, you know, guys that don't want to go down on women, that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you could do that show. I don't yeah. know a phobia in your case. <laughs> But if, yeah. you, if you call in, the screeners will talk to you and put you on with somebody from the television program and get you on TV. Yeah. All right. When are you doing that? Before I started filming, it's going to air in June. Mm. So I think probably really these people will, in mm, February, probably will need them. All right. We'll look forward to that. You can, uh, all right. Well, I'm not going to tell you anymore. If you go to uh, krock.com, you can uh, take a look at uh, many, many, many cool things you can do. And, of course, money's a write-off, and it's uh, going to a uh, worthy cause. Nisha? Yes? 19? Yes. What's up? Not much. Um, I thought I'd just call and ask this question. Um, my boyfriend, we've been going out for about a year, and maybe three or four times um, when he's had an orgasm, he hasn't ejaculated. 
Just out of curiosity, are you uh, stick? Irwindale Speedway? Where, where are you? We, we, you're driving one of those outlaw midget sprint cars? No, I'm just driving in the car. Oh, you're in the car, okay. And you're driving? No, my boyfriend's driving. I just think. Right. What's he? Uh, what's he got under the hood? Um, I don't know. Ask him. Four right. cylinder, the Civic. Oh, it's a Civic. Didn't sound like it. All right, do you, what, do you got something going? You got some exhaust or something going on there, or uh, maybe a throttle body? Uh, it's factory. Say it again. If they hear me revving it up. Oh, okay. Nice. Bone stock, huh? Fully stock. All right, fully stocked. But I like a guy. By the way, hold on. Let me say this. When I, you know, what drives me nuts. Everything drives me insane. But oh, when no I, no doubt, I drive with people. When I, when I drive with someone who drives a stick, I may even yell at you for this, Drew. Which is the guy who shifts prematurely with the stick. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he puts it in first. He gets up like fourteen, fifteen hundred. Then it's into second. Yeah. Or, and and then he gets it up to like sixteen hundred. You don't yell at me. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Uh -huh. Then he's into third. And it was like now we're we're in uh, we're in fourth gear. We're going twenty eight miles an hour. And it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> the engine's just uh, filling up with carbon. Like, and I'm a, and then I feel like an idiot now. I'm not sure what to do. Now I sit there and I'm like kind of looking, and they do it again, and up oh, they're going. It's like they're practically like going from third to fourth. Like wow. I just imagine you reacting the way you do with the ranchero music, like just cut it out. Yeah, it, you just start yelling at the I, driver. No, I sit on it for a while, and yeah. then it's like. Then the next one is like, uh, yeah, uh, I try to come at it from a helpful standpoint. Like, you know, it's better uh, you get a lot less carbon deposits uh, in there if you if you. If you yeah, you're talking to your mom's friend. If you were talking to me or yeah, someone, start yelling, screaming at us. Okay, but it it just bothers me. I like I like the fact that uh, Nisha's boy go ahead and goes ahead and turns a few hours before he shifts. But he's got a dry ejaculation. Ooh. How many times has this happened? Maybe three or four. Is he on any medication? No. You sure? Yes, Positive. Sure. Don't even take aspirins for headaches. And do you uh, do you masturbate a lot where there's sort of nothing left kind of thing? No, I don't. I barely masturbate at all. Uh, like okay, maybe. we got no, no. You know what I'm talking about? Right. First, he's made no car modifications whatsoever. Yes, but he but he's rubbing the engine. All right, but he don't. He won't take aspirin. <laughs> I don't like that. And then and then <laughs> he second, didn't say he doesn't smoke pot or drink you know wine. Mm. Nisha, Nisha, what's your man's name? David. David. Uh -oh. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> now how do you know he has an orgasm if nothing comes out? Because he sounds like he does, and he says he does. Because I asked him, did you have an orgasm? And he said, yes, because I assume he doesn't. Cause but, David, you know what I'm talking about? Have you, he, is it sort of, has it been, have you had one recently before that, and you sort of have nothing left? No, no because it's, cause it's just started happening to me within the last year, and it's only been with her. Well, it, it may be something called retrograde ejaculation, where the ejaculation goes back up into the bladder. It makes you gay. No, it doesn't make gay. Yeah. And that, that can be, from, you know, positioning. It could be medication. It could be just you. Or it may be that you have been having sex more frequently than your body can kind of keep up with. Mm -hmm. It happens sometimes. All right. But so that's a lot. It's though, usually. usually not dangerous. No, it? no, 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 no. Not and I'm day. sure it's not like, you know, when you're 20 years old, you can have sex eight times a day before you run out of uh, sap. You know, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think that's what's going on. I think it's a retrograde. Well, I, did he really have an orgasm? You know, I mean, he experienced yeah, he a was, sensation. That's, that's you know, not, that's not a question for male. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, not, that's not something. I'm not sure. Well, nothing came out though. You know, did he just have a weird? Ever, but every once in a while, you know what I'm saying? You have this weird sensation, and it's sort of like something happened. And then almost orgasm. Yeah. All right. But again, that's from masturbating too much. Okay, okay. I heard you the first ten times. Mark? Yeah? You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Hey, um, so uh, my girlfriend is uh, 15, and uh, she's, she's got an amazing sex drive. Uh, mm -hmm. way whoa, 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 whoa. She's 15, and you're 19? What are you doing with a 15-year-old? Banging her. Um, we, uh, we met. We started uh, spending time together and... Hey, yeah, okay, well, thanks. Get the notes out. I'll see. Yeah. Matt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> started spending time together. Time together. And then started having sex. Uh -huh. That's how it happened. Oh, okay. All right. I thought you guys n never met and spent zero time together. I really had no idea. Just idea who you? I thought he just put his uh, penis through a, through a hole yeah. in, a, in a, you know, like it's an outhouse, yeah. and uh, she got on the other end and serviced him. I didn't know they'd actually see each yeah, other. Kind of hard luck. But Mark, here's the deal: a 15-year-old who is going out with a 19-year-old that has a heavy sex drive, almost by definition, is a, is a, is a trauma survivor. Is mm -hmm. someone who's who's struggling with issues. Mm -hmm. 
So what happened to her? What happened uh, to her? What happened to her? Um, yep. My parents divorced. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Mark. I guess that's, uh, Stop doing the dishes, Mark. Mark. Yeah. Stop doing the dishes. Can you right? empty the ashtrays after you get off the phone, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Oh, how dare you, Adam? What are you how doing? You? What are you doing, Mark? Uh, I just went over and sat down on the couch because you wanted me to quit doing the dishes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, but by the way, do you have your own national top ten show? Is it Mark's you know, pedophile countdown you do every Saturday? Do you spend that much time on the radio that you actually be doing a load of dishes for the three minutes you're going to be on? Um... Yeah, no, matter of fact, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, you got to think about it for a second, Adam. Come on. This kid's cocky. I like that. Well, all right. So um, you're having sex with a uh, 15 year old. See, we don't like that. What you, grade you, is she supposed to be in? 15? Is uh, she 10th grade? 10th grade, mm. yes. Yeah. And you're out of high school? I just graduated last uh, Ju uh, July. Or July. All right. June. So uh, yeah, nine she, months ago. She's a. Um, she's an old. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> Just, you still wearing the cap and gown, that, Mark? That, that is the that is the converse of well, right now. That's that's the same I'm impulse. Just, I'm practically in high school. <laughs> I just graduated, you know, in uh, well, the, before Mark, the summer. Mark, what are you doing for work? Right? What are you doing for work? Um, I uh, work at a computer repair shop. Okay. And, uh, yeah, right, the, uh, the quirk to it is uh, it's owned by her mom. Oh. All right. And she's in the tenth grade. Yes. And uh, are you guys in love? Uh, yes, we are very much so. Uh, all right, all right. Mark, have you um, have you not had a lot of girlfriends before this one? Mm, no, she's actually my first. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. I put that together with the computers. Yeah. All right, here's what's going on. Yeah. This isn't your usual sort. Of, this isn't the guy with the El Camino and the primer. No, and the this fenders. is the uh, car, the uh, comic book store owner. Yeah, he's Simpsons. a computer guy. Yeah. yeah. This the nerdy guy who really emotionally, even though he's 19 chronologically, yeah, could be from an experiential standpoint, is probably younger. It's 13 or 14. He's got a little bit of that and it, little antisocial feel to him. Yeah, yeah. He's got, got, a, little, got a, little, a little angry nerd yeah. to him, as most nerds do. But he's getting laid, and he wants to talk about it. Yeah. And that's basically what to, his question is. broadcast it. Yeah, because... Uh, What's his question? Well, let's ask how frequently she. Maybe he's just sort of bewildered by. But by the way, guys like this aren't um, dangerous. Well, he may be though. Mm, it, 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 I'll tell you where it gets dangerous. Later on, if she's a chick who's uh, worth anything, she gets in the eleventh grade. There's some senior guy who likes her. She realizes she's going out with the nerdy guy. She dumps him, and then he freaks on her. Mm. How, how often is it she wants to have sex, Mark? Um. More than I do, and uh, that's generally something like uh, four times on a good day. Four times a day. Mm -hmm. See, that's... A good day. What's okay. a bad day? Um, a bad day is just uh, what once or uh, you know, as you know, schedule allows. But uh, on a good day, it's generally. Well, Mark, well, give me four. what's the average? Average. Don't give me your personal best. What's the average? <laughs> personal best is way way average. Average. Uh, average, uh, just by schedule, uh, the time allowed is uh, average twice. number. Twice, two. Twice a day. Twice, twice a day. day. Right. And right. uh, you you would like to do it less than that? Mm, you know, I'm actually happy at two. All right. What, well, then wait, 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 well, he not. called to say he gets laid. He's been dying to say that for the last four years. He's been so watching you, all your, his classmates get some. Your average is two. You want two. Where's the problem? There's no problem. Uh, He's, she uh, She's perfectly happy going uh, many, many more than that, and I'm usually finished before she's Well, uh, that's because you're a great <laughs> lover, Mark. I still worry that she's bipolar or a trauma survivor or something. Oh, she is. She is. She's bipolar. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well there Mark, you go. You're exploiting somebody who's got some issues. Make, just make sure she gets proper treatment. Yeah, All right. I, I do everything I can to help her. With okay. That. No, we know. As 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 don't uh, get her pregnant. As situations like this um, are that we don't like. This this is amongst the best. Yeah, this, you're fine. Just you're, don't. You're taking care of her. You have a conscience. Uh, she she dumps you in, a, in eight months. Don't get freaky on her. But realize that some of that excessive sexual activity may be hypomania. And if she's a trauma survivor, it's very difficult for her to sort of feel satisfied sexually. She'll, she'll go in these periods where she's constantly obsessing about it, and then she'll shut down completely and not be interested in it. Yeah. Robin? Yes, hi. 26? Yep. What's up? Um, my problem is, is that my boyfriend, who I've been with almost, well, about two years now, 
um, when we first started dating, I had been with a lot more men than he'd been with women. He'd only been with mm -hmm. one other person besides me. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now. He's himself. Yeah, go it's ahead. It's so hot in here. I know. Go ahead. Now the problem is, is that we're having a huge trust issue in our relationship where he's told me that he still doesn't trust me because he thinks that I was a slut and a whore oh. back in the day and that he thinks that people don't change and that... How many, guys, how many guys have you been with? I've been with 25. Hmm. Uh, That's a good number. Hey, wh why, did, why don't you stand up for yourself? This guy's being an ass. Yeah. Well, I do. I tell him that, you know, people do change. You know, and when I... Along yeah. Well, Robin, you, it's not even about changing. You don't need to change. Were you cheating on these guys? No, but, I mean, I'm not proud of my number. I mean... Yeah, but 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 listen, here here's the deal. Um, he's trying to shame you. And he, he, here's the deal. Also, by the way, there's he feels there's, inadequate. There's envy in this too. Of course, certain amount of envy. He wishes he had the same number. Of course. I mean, here's the thing. As a guy, you want your number to be higher than your woman. Yes, that's it. And I don't get, I don't care and, if you're four or four. And in your twenties, you have energy about that. And you have energy. And he has energy about it. Now, here's the thing. You guys end up arguing about whether you're, you know, he, he, he comes at it from a sort of pragmatic standpoint, which is, hey, I'm just worried you're going to act again. Yeah. Who knows when your vagina's going to strike again? <laughs> Your, your vagina could pounce it's a at wild any vagina. moment. Who knows? It could, I picked your vagina up in a tree. And by the way, men penis have weird comes, fantasies about women and their penis sexuality. Penis comes walking by, yeah. Drew. The vagina's up in the tree and pounces, pounces on it absolutely. like a cougar. It happens all the time. Yeah. No, he's not really worried about that. He feels inadequate. shame yeah. and inadequate, and he's going to thrust that onto you. Yeah. And then you're going to engage him in this retarded argument about we've been together for two years and I've never cheated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not yet. You slut. Oh, yeah. Oh, what an ass. Oh, and look, Just an uh, according to your average, 25 <laughs> guys lost your virginity at 16. You're doing three guys a year up until when I met you. So that means you've probably done three more. You've probably done a guy in this time we've had this argument. The reality is only about two guys a year. Yeah. And she probably went to college and probably had her thing in the early yeah. 20s, if any women have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's two points something a year. But, yeah, it, it, the point is... I don't know what she lost. Well, it's fine when she lost her virginity. Here's here's my point. Don't engage him in this argument. No, put Robin. it put it down, Robin. I will I will uh, I will straight. When, when did you lose your virginity? By the way, I lost it when I was eighteen. Eighteen. So getting yeah. closer to my three number. By the way, all right, it's three. You guys been going out since you were twenty four? Yeah. So it's three. Six so it's years. Four. Ooh. It's four years. Twenty five was her number. Oh yeah. Eighteen to twenty four. One times twelve. Did I have 12? Six, wait, eight, wait, 18, month? 24, six years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, four wait. guys a year. Oh, four guys a year. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Good times. Okay, listen. <laughs> oh, we got a problem. Robin, <laughs> here's what yeah. you need to do. Are you listening to me, Sweet Pea? I'm listening. Don't dance with him. You will be doing him a favor, and I wish someone would have done this for me when I was uh, 27, full of piss vinegar, and so does every other guy secretly, whether they admit it or not. Here's what it is. Uh, look, here's what, when he comes at you that way. I'm not cheating on you. I've not cheated on you. Person. I'm committed uh, to you. There's uh, many, many, many women who have done uh, this and worse. Uh, I never cheated on anybody. I was just having a good time. People in their twenties exploit this, one another. And this, this is what, what they do this is college. what people do when they're uh, this age. Now, you want to be my boyfriend, and you want to focus on moving this forward. Shut up. Or do you want to just do, do the foot drag routine yeah. and live in the past? Because you will, and this relationship will end not because I cheat, because you keep harping on me. No, I totally would, I, I hear what you're saying because it makes sense. Because I see a lot of he envies a lot of the fact that he's kind of, he was kind of the the Metallica geek, you know? Yeah, he was and a nerd. He didn't get laid. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was he was kind of the nerd in school, and I, I was the cheerleader. Yeah, you're so in demand. I was he, feel, he feels inadequate. He feels like he can't hang on to you. He's scared. Here's the deal. He's going to screw this up. If he does, yeah, if he's he doesn't, going to sabotage it. you got you got to just put it down, and if he can't let go of it, then he needs to go yeah. Get his number up you there. You better tell him he's got to let go of it. Yeah. Or or he he, he will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Absolutely. You will cheat and you will move on and that'll be that. And uh, by the way, um, 
Uh, enter Sandman. You will be, uh, that's a Metallica song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Enter Jackman. <laughs> you will be beating off staring at your uh, Lars poster back in your crappy apartment. And uh, you know the one who's got the numbers? Going to add to those numbers. Sure. You're 26. You're a cheerleader. You do what you want. Arizona? Yeah, oh, yeah. Hmm. You're fine, baby. Just believe me. But here's what I'm saying. Guys, and women have their own version of this, too. Each partner needs a yank on the chain. What's, what's the female version? I'm trying to think. What, what I, here's what I'm saying. Uh, because see, women, women spin out. If your wife does the same thing, you know. And, I, and we've talked about this before. I secretly believe that when the other couple spins out, I shouldn't say the couple, but the other partner yeah. spins out, they're almost, they feel like a child mm -hmm. or a pet that mm -hmm. gets out of control. Yeah. Pet, you give a pet run of the house and shut the door, they, they just everywhere. start to crap over, yeah. they start chewing on themselves, yeah. they're chewing furniture, relax, Roy, see your posture, relax. You can go now. You want to say something, but just listen no, no. to me. I, this is interesting I'm to listening. me. They need confinement. Like, uh, they don't need restraint, but they need to say, look, uh, I'm your master. Everything's going to be cool. Yeah. Now, get in the broom closet. I'm shutting the door. Yeah. That, you're like, when your wife went nuts when you went to the Playboy match mm. and to do politically incorrect, mm -hmm. the backpedaling causes more. It's like they're rolling downhill. They're stumbling at you. You backpedal. They feel more out of control. Mm -hmm. They feel like they're losing. They're stumbling. They yeah. can't keep up their feet. They need you to yank that chain. You need to say, look, this is business. I got a house here and a family to provide for. Obviously, I'm not in the grotto with any playmates. We're shooting a TV show right here. And by the way, I'm out by 9 o'clock to go to my next job. All right? So, zip it. I need to be able to focus. I don't need you riding me for stuff I didn't do. Mm -hmm. Boom. It snaps them in, into place. I think they need it, provided you didn't spend the weekend at the bunny ranch right and i think in a situation like robin's here i think she needs to tug oh, the chain absolutely so look you want this to end it's gonna end not because i'm gonna cheat because you won't stop talking about a past that you feel inadequate about yeah. with your past now i love you we've been yeah. together for two years no cheating let's move on am i right absolutely it's All setting right. a boundary All right. it's a hey, it's your problem not mine people like boundaries yep Yes? Yes. All right, now give me some coffee. Speaking of boundaries, yeah. uh, we're still looking for that masturbation couple willing to keep a diary <laughs> and we're people not. interested in talking about phobias, fear they have about their sexuality. All right. We are? Yeah, it's call in and we'll put them on television. All right. We're going to take a break. I, I, Matt's been on All right, 99 minutes, All right, take poor it. guy. Matt. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Matt, Matt huh? the dude, you're 13. Uh-huh. You know, Matt the girl, Adam. No, I'm a dog. Oh. Could be I'm, Maddie. I'm a, dude. I'm a dude. All right. Okay. Let's, First, let's I just want to say thank you for taking my call. I know how hard this is, and it's an honor to be talking to you. Like Adam, you are. Yeah. I, I, you are a genius. You no, are like. that's a, true. That's true. Frankie Ham has changed my life. Seriously, he oh, is. No. Thanks, brother. Funniest man on television. Thanks, brother. And you know, uh, new Crank Yankers coming out yeah, on I've, Wednesday, by I've, the way. I watched the very first episode of Crank Yankers and have been a very loyal fan ever since then. I have. Thanks, man. All Thanks for the ass kissing. But all all that all that uh, aside, your question is. Uh, uh, my mom, this is for Dr. Drew. My mom has uh, breast cancer and she's uh -huh. going to start chemotherapy. Uh huh. And I was wondering if there were any other alternatives besides tamoxifen, if there were any other drugs like that that could help. Well, there is a new one out. I'm blanking. It's called Femera, I think. It's, an, it's a one just like it. And that's not really chemotherapy as much as hormonal therapy. If, if they also recommend chemotherapy, it's crucial she take it. You want to be very aggressive with breast cancer. Outcomes are very good with aggressive treatment. Chemo two is, is a, I know, chemo, chemo is essentially a Chemo is usually a poison. Take a poison, yeah. and that's why the body gets so sick. Yeah. And you try to kill the cancer. More than the body, yeah. Mm hmm How are we doing on cancer? Pretty good. Pretty good? The only ones rides in certain, it's certain it's cancers? The, the adenocarcinoma is the solid tumors we don't do so hot with. The mm -hmm. lung, the colon, and the uh, pancreas. Right. But the colon we can prevent. There's no right. reason for people to have colon cancer anymore. No. But again, you have to catch it late. Late. Always best. That's the thing about colon cancer. You catch it early. You're gone. Matt had another question. And if you catch it before you even have it, uh, you're not going to make it to the weekend. <laughs> Matt has, I'm reading Matt's comical second question. Mm. Matt? Uh-huh. What's your second question, brother? Uh, my girlfriend, she says that there's this thing as a vaginal fart called a queef, and I was wondering if that was possible. Possible, And I know the chief is a certified OBGYN, so what you say, so I was wondering if maybe I could ask him that. 
Oh, the chief. You want to? You want to ask uh, Thunder Bear? Thunder Bear. Uh huh. All right, I'll get him in here real quick. Right now. See yeah, right now. See if you can right get him now. away from his Tetris. Yeah, let me get away and try to. Yeah, hey, uh, oh, oh, whoa. where'd he come in from? Oh, Chief, Chief, I'm mad here. Thank you for joining us. Chris, get under the table. Chris, get out of here. Oh, here we go. Junior, Focus here, Chief. Uh, Matt here has a question about the uh, e emission of air from the vag vagina during intercourse. Yeah, heck, yeah, one night, yes, yes. does happen. He thinks, in fact, he thinks it's a glorious experience. Fart is with bear, yeah. Yes, one yes. night, yes. And it happens sort of, he's saying, sort of like a piston action, mm. uh, Matt, when air is forced in by the yes. penis, it can kind of kind of squeeze out around the edges and make a fart like that. Tomahawk head too big for teepee Or opening. sometimes the, the air gets pushed in there and comes out later. That's your K on yes. the Yes, just like a piston, that's right. We on the he he queef signals. Yes, yeah, of course. You be, well, the that the was, uh, yeah, in, in your time, Chief. Mm -hmm. Send at nights. No see smoke them at night. We remember... Queef signals. Yeah, Chief, you remember uh, Jim... Uh, How many men... Well, you Maybe remember, 100 brains. But you remember Jim Rose, whose, whose uh, wife used to <laughs> shoot fire out of her vagina. Drew, no yeah. step him on Queef Joe. <laughs> All right, man, we got to go to break. Hey, and, uh, Thank you, Chief. Uh, hey, wait, what can I, 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 think, I was in Oklahoma, and I saw a Choctaw Casino. Yeah, yo, what? Hey, so, K. Uh, oh, it's his. It's Chief's. No, uh, Keno. Thunder Bear, Thunder Bear has the Keno bar there. Hey, uh, uh, pen poker. You may, you hey, may see him there at the Pie, pie Gal table. Pie Gal, Texas, hold on. Hey, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> hey uh, check a nickel slot. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Yeah, hey, Chick. Hey, all right. Hey, he blesses you and your family. All right. All right, let's uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah. Woo. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Oh. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. -er. Well... Kitties, the bidding is up to fifty-five hundred dollars, and uh, again, every penny of that going to the uh, tsunami relief. And uh, fifty-five hundred, you uh, hang out for uh, an entire show here with uh, me and the good doctor. Ten to one, it gets up to about seven grand, and the person leaves after the first forty-five minutes. Like, yeah, that's enough. I've seen enough. I'm tired. I'm tired. Heard enough about Carl complaining about his uh, family during the commercials. Oh, my God. They don't know what they're in for. <gasps> but I can tell you this. <clears throat> if you spend some serious buckage, like 5500 bucks, to come in here and hang out with us, I will be on my best behavior. No way. I will be cordial. I will be happy to see you. Oh, that's, now, we'll let's be, be honest here. That's if the sort of the stars align and stuff and things. If, if you if happen to be in a bad way. a bad day, it's yeah. going to be rough. Yeah. No, if you came in here seriously, Drew, if you come in here and I know you spend some good money and it's going to a good cause, uh, we're going to have a good time. Okay. I may even bring a little food or something. Oh, really? That's I nice. may even bust into my macadamia nut oh, stash and well. give you half a nut. Mm. Yeah? That's quite generous of you. Mm-hmm. And uh, whatever you want, by the way, you come in here, you want uh, Ace's accordion. Uh, what if they want to see countdown. your... Um Oh yeah, okay. They can select the select the feature. You select whatever you want. We will do. We will dance. What if Adam they want to see a exhibition of your ultimate talent? Which is pulling my sack up over my head? No, that's number two. I mean your receiving talent. Oh, how I receive oral. Mm. Well, for uh you know, a uh, a couple lucky ladies or one lucky gent, you could uh, you could watch me in my in my you mean this one, Drew, right? Yeah, nobody yeah, receives but, oral like me. A lot of guys brag that they give great oral. Sure, anyone could give good oral, but what about receiving? You, nobody you receives. Hold the title. Nobody, nobody receives like me. Drew, look at this posture. Right, listen, I, listen, I'm humbled. I'm envious. It oh, makes me uncomfortable yeah. to look at. You know, here's for you. I'm not going to give you all my tricks, but an occasional well placed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, it's a moving. Yeah, touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We ready to go here? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, you just go to, uh, by the way, go to krock.com, K-R-O-Q.com, and uh, not only can you uh, bid to hang out with us here at Loveline, many other things up on the auction block, and all the money going to the tsunami relief. You get a guitar signed by uh, 311, walk-on part on the uh, OC. Uh, although, thankfully, uh, Anderson gave some clarification. It's a to dash that. on park. You're just going to actually be one of the many, many Or maybe they should call it a, a run on park. Probably not going to get any FaceTime. Yeah. But uh, batting practice with the Dodgers, 
That's a good one. Uba stank at the, the uh, event of your choice. Pennywise in your home. <laughs> How much not to let them into my home again? I, I know. You pay five grand, they don't come over? I just over. said keep the bar That's the way it should handy. work. And, yeah. No, they should really. Everyone's got to pay money or Pennywise might come to your house. That's ready yeah, to Yeah, I, I put in for that one. True. I put you down for three grand. Yeah, right, right away. Easily. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, tickets to any uh, K-Rock concert, and there's a lot of them. Open, uh, open up on the uh, side stage at the Weenie Roast. Again, you could be signed. Your band could be signed. All right, you ready? Oh, and also 1-800-LOVE-191. St we're still looking for the couple to keep a masturbation diary for television on a show on Discovery Health Channel and people. True show, your my show. show. And Say people, your show. My show on Discovery Health Channel. And people are having phobias about sexuality. They're fearful of penises or moral sex or whatever. What kind of penises? Fearful. Phobias. Fearful of penises. Mm. All right. Jennifer? Hi. You're 20? Yeah. What's happening? Um, what's, what's so funny? I was just laughing because I, I, I made a watched uh, Entertainment Tonight with my wife about uh, Brad and Jennifer's oh, breakup. Yeah. My wife is just beside herself. Really, <laughs> really broken up. I do. Why? <laughs> because I would have Brad's baby for him if Jennifer won't. Well, but Brad's not not a good partner. I Brad, pr he, I, I'm sure he's going to land on his feet. <laughs> he's, okay. he's a tough kid. He's beautiful. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's just, I, I think when uh, good-looking Hollywood types get together, and also my wife would always use them as an example because all oh, the wife, BS they, they, they sent me like, Brad went out to buy... A, uh, he went out to buy a Range Rover for himself, okay, and he got, he came home with another one. And for you and his I wife. talked about this All immediately, immediately. Immediately, when we saw the way he was behaving, we went, "Okay, what's up? What's going on here? This yeah. guy's up to something." All this crazy envy, yeah. though, that that it, it evokes in women. <laughs> Brad, he's just Pitt, manipulating her. Brad Pitt. Well, who cares why it is? The point. Okay, he makes uh, eighteen million dollars a flick, and he makes three a year. Of uh, him buying. Uh, an extra forty-six thousand dollar Range Rover uh, for his old lady. Uh, him leasing her uh, yeah. a Range Rover is uh, you wouldn't even is really the equivalent to uh, engineer Chris coming home with a, a sack of fiddle faddle right. for his mom. Right. Pro uh, sadly, that'd be more less. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah. But I, do the ten bucks a night versus the yeah. Do the math. I sorry, buddy. Okay. He can't I mean, look at you. He can't look at you. Okay. I mean, he can't even well, look okay, at you anymore. I'm sorry to use you as an example. I'm, 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 I'm propping you up as a proud guy, though, is what I'm saying, Chris. Are hey, you? Uh, here's. He doesn't get it. Okay. He's, Here, he's missing the nuance. It's cool. The point, <laughs> the point it's Mel, dude. Are you cool? Chris? Maintain. So you're cool. All right. Dude, you got to maintain. <laughs> all right, dude. You got to. It's Mel. That's all I'm saying, dude. Point is, is uh, now that they've broken up, my wife's like, oh, my God. Oh. And then she announced that she's going to see all Jennifer Hansen's <laughs> movies. <laughs> <laughs> to support her. <laughs> she made $100 million from friends over the last nine years. Did, uh, right. did, she point, or did you point out to her what Brad had been doing with Angelina? Uh, I have. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there were things we heard, right? Yeah. Oh, well, now it's coming up. But here's the thing I like. Here's what I like. Uh, I know, you know. I'm, I'm horrible at gossip because uh, somebody had gossiped uh, to us, somebody in the know, I uh, won't mention any names, that uh, Brad and Angelina were uh, having a little tryst at uh, some point. This is months ago, maybe We a heard about a long time ago. A year ago? Eight months ago. Hmm. Maybe, a year was it a year? Maybe getting on to a year. Yeah. The point is, is uh, we're like, yeah, all right. So now, but, but here's what I like. Their publicist uh, issued a statement saying it had nothing to do right. with any of the things that the tabloids were talking about. Right. Literally, that's yeah. the statement. So my wife's like, well, maybe they just, I was like, no, they're, they, they ish, their publicist issued a statement. Try to control. Yeah. Yeah, the, the same, same publicist said Dick Clark was fine and would be uh, on his feet in a matter of seconds, probably uh, you know running the uh, Boston Marathon just moments after his minor, minor stroke that has kept him in the hospital for a for month. Now, uh, month. I don't even know if he's out yeah, of the hospital yet. Now, yeah. Is he out yet? I don't know. But of course you don't believe what publicists say. That's why you have publicists. 
If, if you could just issue the truth, you wouldn't need these these, these, these barnacles on the ass of society known <laughs> as publicists. Of course. And we listen to it. It's like, they, and, and we keep buying that line of BS. You know, it's like, it's entertainment tonight. And uh, a spokesperson for uh, Brad and Jennifer said that it was nothing to do with anything you might read about or any extramarital. Oh, Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad you said so. You know how it is. People in their early 30s who are married three and a half years, they drift apart. They drift apart, Drew. You know how it is. Nonsense. He got tired. She got tired of looking at his six-pack abs. Uh, he got tired of looking at her perfect body and her million, multi-million dollar paycheck. They drift apart, Drew. Well, listen to what the publicist says. By the way, I, was, I saw myself on uh, E! True Hollywood Star, E! No, Hollywood Wives or something, something I did a year ago. Mm -hmm. I predicted this. Oh, yeah. on TV? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Jennifer? Yeah? What's up, baby doll? Um, well, I have this friend, and we go out, like, clubbing together into bars. And, um, like, occasionally guys will come up and ask for my number, and it's, like, uh, sometimes we meet, like, a couple of guys, and she'll hook up with one, and, like, I'm usually really, like, reserved about hooking up with a guy. And, like... There was one incident, like, that just kind of happened recently where, like, she, you know, had sex with the guy, and then he ended up calling me and Ew. trying, yeah, and then she gets all upset because she's... Hold on. Like, Quiet. How did he get your number? Well, because we all exchange numbers, like, all of us, like, there, there's just a group of us, you know, and, mm -hmm. like, we went back to his apartment, and we were all hanging out. And she ended well, Jennifer, up with, Jennifer, was it she was actually bitterly angry with you, or was she just sort of generally angry and mouthing off? And you can understand that she'd be sort of frustrated and angry. Well, it's just that she's always telling me that she's unattractive and that I always get all the attention and stuff, and I Is don't really true? know what to tell her. And Is that true? My, yeah. My, Is it true? Well, most of the time, I suppose. All right, so it's true. So the best she can really hope for is to use you to get at guys. Yeah. She can use you to sort of meet guys and things. It's a stepping a, bone. It's the way it is that she, you attract guys across the room more than her. Maybe she's better in a relationship. Whatever. She's got to sort of work on what she's got. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way it goes. That's not your fault. All right. But you know, listen, you called to say you're hot and your friend's a slut and what can you do about it? Nothing. Nothing. Don't hang out with her then. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. That was one of those chick things like, I, I'm really, you know, I don't have to put out because I'm hot, but my yeah. friend's kind of doggy, so she has to blow guys, you know, and now she's mad at me because I'm hot. After she blows them, the guy calls me. Here's the whole thing. W women weren't meant to hang out with each other, and if they were, it wasn't the good-looking ones with well, the uh, chunk. You know what, they, but they are. On, on one level, women band together and take good care of each other, but the the envy and the shunning just gets triggered so easily. You know what? But but think about this concept for a second, Drew. Women, it's like all oh, Drew. You don't have any male friends, or uh, you can't have male friends, and you can't have female friends, and then guys don't like you. So you're kind of at a cross. Well, guys like me, I just don't have time for them. You need a pet or something. But here's too. here's the thing, guys. Guys, I, I know you say you don't have time for them, but really, Drew, it could break your life down, all the uh, useless travel you do. Here's the thing. Guys like hanging out with guys. Women don't like guys hanging out with guys because I think in a way it rubs it in their face that they can't have the same sex relationships that guys have. Every guy I know, and Drew can't do it because he's on too short a leash and he's too freaked out and he can't, feels like uh, if he doesn't spend a second uh, reading the uh, DSM-5 or, or massaging his kids, something's going to go wrong in his life. It's going to be struck by lightning. But every guy I know, and even Drew hypothetically, loves hanging out with guys. Nothing better. Nothing better than watching a ball game with your buddies. Nothing better than playing some paintball, or taking in a movie, or going on a road trip to Vegas. Any number of these things. Catching a, catching a game, a ball game. Awesome. Women have their friends, 
but it ain't the same thing. And they really, I think it almost rubs it in their face a well, little they all, bit. They also are fearful of groups of males because they know how they behave. Yeah, well, I know. But look, you're going to a ball game or you're playing paintball. Yeah, I, I mean, know. who cares? Yeah. You're going to a strip joint. You're Unless not, there's you, one. Yeah. Well, if there's one on the way, there's yeah. one on the way. And, it, and the paintball place is in Fontana, so there's got to be one in between here and Fontana. Yeah. Maybe more than one. Here's my point. Uh, society, relationships in the world would be a much better place if you... Uh, you broads could uh, hang out with your buds a little bit. The guys could hang out with their buds a little bit. Take a little of the pressure off the relationship because there's nothing worse than the guy ha having a good time with his buddies and the woman just waiting at home pacing. Mm -hmm. You need your buddies, too. All right. Here we go. Take a little break. Be right back after this. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I'm all gassed out from yapping during the break, Drew. All right, I'll take over. Talk my ass off during the break. <laughs> Should please not let me shoot my wad during the break? Oh, that's tough. I know. Standing up, arms flailing about. I, many I tried to hold you back. I did. Many theories to try to uh, wedge into uh, Especially four Especially when you start break. talking about Jennifer and uh, what's his name? <laughs> Brad. <laughs> Brad. I didn't yell his name enough times, Drew. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, by the way, the bidding at $5,500, all going to a very worthy cause. Drew, Love I, I gave $3,000. I'm not going to hold it to uh, match the bid, but uh, you're going to have to fork something over now. You Clearly. understand? Clearly. Clearly? All right. All right. Don't make me embarrass you a few weeks from now when I bring it up again. And then I also am trying to get uh, oh, some callers off the line here. one 800 lb 191 No, trying to create a show um, about masturbation and mm -hmm. about phobias. So call in if you have those issues. For your TV show? Yeah. Where you get paid. Where I get paid whether they're there or and not. And none of that money goes to the tsunami. Well, some fund. of it's going to, obviously. Well, be nice. Sarah? Yeah, hi. You're 15? Mm-hmm. What's happening? Um, well, I think I might... Hold on a second. What if, uh, what if you came home and said to your wife, I gave $10,000 to the tsunami fund? That wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. She'd say, what do you, what? That's a lot of, what are you kidding? That's a lot right. of money. What, what are we doing? Right. Oh! Yeah. Now, what do you think the amount would be? And I'm not going to hold you to it, but, uh... That, would, but that I could do without her freaking out? Yeah, it's an it's an interesting thing because uh, I'm in a situation... Because I just had a discussion today about... Yeah. I, I like to give them colleges and things. I mean, that's my yeah. thing. And we were right. having a discussion today about that. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we know this is... Because she manages stuff. Uh-huh. So, so she, she's got that thing more than you, maybe. Yeah. She's got a little fear going. Yeah. Okay. I finally instilled it in her. You think you instilled it in her? Or maybe you're just... You know, maybe you got, that was your connection. No, no, I'm still... <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. You freaked her out? Yeah, yeah. She was fine before she met yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, Now she's more freaked out than you are? Mm, she's acquired some of those. What do, you think the, what do you think the number is? That I could do without her finding out about it? No, or no, that, that, that you wouldn't could freak do her that wouldn't, wouldn't freak her out. 2,500. No. She'd freak at 25. Mm. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'm only 15. 15. 25 would freak. Mm. What do you give her the whole write-off speech? You got oh, enough write-offs. Yeah. Yeah? No? You could use some more? But we got. I'm going to sit down and have a discussion about this. All right. We're yeah, do Because we actually were talking about giving something to Tsunami thing, too. We wanted to. So You know what you need to tell her? I was saying it when uh, you were uh, chasing a nickel, and I don't know where, uh, when we had uh, the guys on from, um, uh, what the hell, band, Hoobastank yeah. and uh, at the drive. <laughs> right, right. Oh. <laughs> Lincoln Park was in here. I said, look, there's two, there's a couple guys I know. Well, actually, the guy I know gives away the most junk, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Always has. He's the guy I know has got the most money. Mm. And the uh, guy or guys I know who are the tightest, giving away the least, always looking for an angle, ripping yeah. people off. Eh? Guess what? Nothing. They got the least. Not karma. I don't know what it is. Mm. I haven't figured out the math. But the people that give away the least have the least. No, the guys that know one. they're most generous you seem to have one. the most. You not not a karma thing, but yet there they are. You gotta give. Think about those who have given away the most. Mm -hmm. They have the most. Thank you. Sarah. Sarah oh, and by the way, let's, let's her talk. I don't care. We have too many. No, who cares? She's abused. And, uh, she's fine. She a little more abuse isn't gonna hurt. Well, so here's my point. And people are like, oh, well, you know, Jimmy Kimmel's got a TV show. It's easy for no no, I'm talking about before. Mm -hmm. Always. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't a few thousand dollars for this or that, but it's what they could do all the time. And it wasn't always money. It was time, it was yeah. effort, it was mm -hmm. helping, it was ever. Those people have the most. Mm. Thank you. Interesting. Thank you. T tell your wife that. Sarah? Mm hmm. 15, uh, used to fool around with your brother? No, I, well, I'm not sure because just because of the ages. We were five and seven. Okay, Drew, and this woman was abused. And we happened? should have gone to her much earlier. And what happened? Um, well, we, he used to, like, we used to, like, hide under blankets and he would, like, touch me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm not really sure whether it was a curiosity thing or whether it was. How are your relationships now? It fine. Okay. She, it it is just, yeah, time. just curious. No, no, she thinks you mean with him. Oh, I mean with uh, with boys. Um, they've been fine, normal. Okay, and you're emotionally okay. No mood disturbances or flashbacks or sleep problems or anxiety, anything like that. Um, no minor anxiety. I've been on antidepressants for a while, but mm. nothing. Hmm. Well, well, that could be just normal, though. Here's the thing, and I, I'm not uh, doing a, uh, you know, hold your hands over your eyes so you can't see or your hands over your ears so you can't hear. But when people call us and tell us that they had these little sort of exchanges with friends, neighbors, family members, what have you, not sure if it was anything, the, I always just tell them, why not? Let's just not make any. Not. Let's, let's not do <laughs> Let's not go there. Now, if you're, you wake up with cold sweats every yeah. night and uh, you're having it was. difficulty with relationships, right. then, then it's time to start delving. But to, just to try to create. No. The only thing I would say is that kids that sexualize or that, act, that exhibition or exhibitionistic or extra exploratory tend to be in catacombs. You might think about those issues more than the actual event itself. Good advice, Drew. So. People would be well to heat it. Yeah. Let's go to break. All right, let's go to break. Drew, very clearly uncomfortable about the money thing coming up. Well, uh, and the wife having control of the purse strings. And by the way, wouldn't you want your wife in control of the purse strings? You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't, you know, because it's a purse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to be some dude carrying the purse strings. wallet strings. Nah, you don't hear about the wallet string. Got to get a new string in my wallet. Mm -hmm. Take a quick break. Be right back. show y'all thanks for uh, tuning in uh, those of you who got the uh, bidding up to 5500 uh, smackers thank you amazing doing the lord's work all right drew imagine if you bid to be on a show and you came home and told your wife 5500 bucks no no you'd be sleeping on my sofa well she'd be going if if yeah she'd be coming in with me or forget it yeah oh, i mean I if, if if she, yeah. she oh, wanted no. to do it. no even that no, yeah, it'd have to be the view. <laughs> be on the view. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Uh, so, until next time, this is Adam Kroller for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Hey, I'm just worried you're going to act again. Yeah. Who knows when your vagina's going to strike again? <laughs> this has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the, 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 the producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.